Mm-hmm. Yeah, and some of the industrial uses, it, I mean, it can really be, it, it, it can vary a lot. Because some of those facilities are just, they're not people intensive, right? There's just a few employees there. Others can be really labor intensive and have a lot of people there. So that that one specifically um, can 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 vary quite quite a bit. So we can take a, a more detailed look at that. We um, can maybe add can something. Be moved up or down, then, correct? Yeah, and you know what what we can do too is um, you know like I said, this is kind of preliminary at, at this point. So we can take a, a closer look at these. Okay. Um, in some instances, it might help to uh, add a standard for based on the number of employees, since that's what drives a lot of the stuff for these kind of activities. So a lot of it's one per employee, you know, per full-time employee on the largest shift or, or something like that. So you have a fairly fairly good good number based on that. So we'll double check those for you. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Anything else? He's got them all together all together again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we'll just uh, have you uh, tidy these all up and go yep. over them. Yep, we'll just continue moving forward on all of these. Um, the last one here is on signs. Um, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on this tonight just because there's a lot of there's a lot of work still to be done. Um, a little bit of background for you guys. This was redone and adopted in 2013 as its own chapter. Um, so it's fairly new and fairly modern as it is. Um, and I wouldn't be inclined to change it at all except that in 2016 the, um, there was a, a case that made it to, to the uh, United States Supreme Court called Reed v. Town of Gilbert. And it was, it was a lawsuit that was appealed all the way up to, through the federal court system that dealt with how local governments can regulate signs. And what they determined was that um, any of your regulations in your zoning code or anywhere else in any community, anywhere in the country, if you're regulating um, what a sign says or, or if you're re- regulating the language, the words on the sign, then that you're kind of wading into free speech territory when you do that. And so you need to have a really, really, really good reason to regulate what people can say. Um, and so the rule of thumb that uh, I that that has kind of come out of that I've gone to a few different conferences on these um, is that the rule of thumb is that if you have to read the words that are on the sign to determine what kind of sign it is in your ordinance, then you're probably regulating speech where you shouldn't be, and so that's where we have to be really careful. And we have to make some changes. And so that's why you'll see in section 20.03, uh, subsection B, C, D um, are all going to have to be deleted because structure and sign, a sign with, which identifies the owners, financiers, contractors, architects, engineers, and the name of a project. That is strictly a, 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 a definition that calls something a construction sign only because of what, what it says. Um, and so when we get into saying, well, you can only have a construction sign in these locations, then we're basically saying, you know, that's getting into this, this free speech area again. There are ways that, that, that we can, you know, get, get pretty close to accomplishing the same goals without actually re- regulating or basing any of these regulations on the actual words on the sign. And that's our ultimate goal here, um, is to have something that, 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 that they call content neutral. So we can, reg- we can still regulate the number of signs, the size of the signs, the location of the signs, whether or not they're illuminated, all that kind of stuff. We just can't really regulate what, she, what you can say on them. Um, again, a government sign. Um, all the stuff that says for the purpose of street correction or traffic control to designate all, all that stuff, you don't know what that is unless you read the sign. Um, incidental sign. Um, placards, political sign, that's going to be, that one's been a little tough because political sign is 
we all saw about a just over a year ago at this time there were political signs everywhere and again you don't know it's a political sign based on this definition unless you look at it and it says name of your preferred candidate or not preferred candidate whatever or the ballot issue or whatever and can, but the only way to to determine based on this whether or not it's a political sign is is to read it and so we have to be careful with how we how we deal with these kind of things same thing with the real estate sign um, the only way that you know a sign is a real estate sign is because it says for sale, you know, one, two, three, Main Street or whatever. So what we're going to do moving forward um, is we're going to go through this in entire chapter and basically try to strip out every content-based regulation that we can find in here. Um, we've done that a little bit all, 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 all already moving forward. Um, it's by no means a uh, finished product. But you can see, um, if you skip down to page 07 and 8, there's all kinds of stuff that I've crossed out on pages 7 and 8 of this, uh, of this memo. So section 20.06 here, again, subsection 3. This, this is probably what we're going to have to do. Um, it talks about signs not requiring permits. So when someone has their, their house for sale and they put a sign in, in their front yard that advertises it for sale, we don't make them get a permit for that. They can just do it. Um, so even though we're not requiring a, a, a permit for that, we're not supposed to have language in here that refers specifically to a real estate sign because our definition for a real estate sign is based on the content. Um, so what we're going to do instead is allow for a temporary sign um, on a property that is being offered for sale. We're not going to tell them what the sign has to say, but presumably it's going to say for sale, 123 Main Street, call real estate agent Bob Smith or whatever. So we have to be a little creative in, 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 in how we do this. Um, we're, we're perfectly fine to regulate the size of the sign, the location, the height, um, how many of them, things like that. We just can't tell them what to say, or what they can say. So you'll see the same thing here, temporary signs on construction sites. So again, instead of saying that on this, on this site you, you can only have a sign that says the name of the construction company who's paying for it and your engineers and blah, 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 uh, we're just going to say you can have a sign on a construction site. What it says, that's up to you. Again. In most instances, it's going to say those things. Um, so the end result is going to be very similar to what it is now, but we're not going to be telling them what they can and can't say on that sign in that instance. So that's uh, the kind of when, when, when you read through this and you have you can see all the stuff that I have crossed out and, and underlined and things like that. That's what you have to be thinking about and say, why did he take out of this? Say, oh, that's why because. This otherwise is sort of regulating what people can and can't say through their signage, and so that's where we're going to be looking at, at, at different ways to, to do it. So, um, again, this is, I don't, I mean, th there's a lot of detail in here, and signs can be very, very, uh, what's the right word? Frustrating, there's a lot of sign minutia, technical, detail that we have to kind of sift through when, when, when we do this, but I wanted to give this to you guys just so to get you thinking about it a little bit. So um, again, I, we'll, we're, we're going to continue working on this over, over the next month and uh, come back with some, with some additional ideas and, and additional language in here to, to regulate these kinds of things, but we kind of see, e even as modern as is your sign ordinance is, it's only a few years old when the planning commission completely rewrote the whole thing. Um, it and almost every other sign ordinance in every community in the entire country had similar content-based regulations in it. And so a lot of them have now been going back like we're doing now, finding the parts that the Supreme Court frowns upon and are, are, are getting rid of them. Yeah, I mean, do we have to do it? No, I mean, we're not going to get a, you know, no one's going to come by and, you know, smack us upside the head if we don't have this done. But 
um, if if we find ourselves in a in, in, in a position where we need to have some sort of enforcement action on a sign and our regulations in here are content based and we're, and we're in, in, enforcing it that way, we're because it's going to be much more difficult to be successful if we have a, a regulation that's very clearly applies in the face of what the Supreme Court has uh, said, said we can do. So we just have to to get all this in line so that so that we can be consistent with the law and with the interpretation of of that case. And also, it'll help us to continue to be able to enforce what we have. It seems like you have to take real signs out of there too. Those people are going to keep long enough about you regulating what they memorialize, right? Yeah, probably. Um, so I mean, it's 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 going to be it's tough because um, you know if you can't regulate what they can say, then there are instances where where we don't want advertising, for example, in some places where, where, where we do want advertising. But if you have to read the sign to, to tell whether or not it's advertising, it, it, it makes it a lot harder. So that's our job is, 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 is to figure out how to accomplish most of the same ends, but just by getting there a little bit different way. So it's, it's very much a work in progress for us and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll continue working on it over the next month. It could be a while. <laughs> like I can't say anything. You never know. So um, we're done with all three of them. Any questions with you guys? <clears throat> Andy's going to rewrite them all up for next yep. month's review. Yep, exactly. We'll just continue moving forward on, on all of them. Uh, we'll have some additional things with regard to these sections set up for the next meeting so we can uh, continue to make revisions and get these things adopted. Sounds good. Any other questions of you guys? Mm -hmm. uh, staff report? The only thing I have to say, uh, Chair Parker wanted me to share this with you, that there's a planning and zoning essentials class that's going to be coming up March 15th in, uh, in Grand Rapids. And you may uh, Amanda and Colin, you may have not gotten these yet, but I can certainly forward this to you. Um, it's uh, different locations and what the planning and zoning essentials class is all about. He was just hopeful that maybe you all might be able to attend. It's March 15th in Grand Rapids. Um, registration starts at 12.45 and then it goes until 5.30 p.m. Those are very good classes. They're taught by planners like me and others um, and they're definitely worth your time if you if you have the time the training is very very useful so I definitely recommend attending if you are available to do so Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Either one holding it up. No, no, no. 